Hey guys. How's it going guys? Chris Gergora. Yep. Nice. Hi. Hi everyone. Hey, we're going to wait just a couple minutes to let people get in. Um, of course, if you have questions right off the bat, you can ask. Uh, one thing, um, we don't have a monitor set up, so we won't see the questions. So what we'll do is every once in a while, Ericon will come over, look at the screen, scroll back through to find messages. So, you know, go ahead and post the messages and we'll try to get to them. You know, if we miss it, you know, please post again. Say, hey, you, you guys didn't answer my question. Um, and we'll do our best um, as we can. Of course, uh, you know, go to our Facebook and our YouTube and Instagram and all that, and like and follow us there. Yeah. But the last time we didn't miss any question, so I think we won't miss any question today. <laughs> that's, so, that's okay. Yeah. But we'll, we'll wait maybe uh, three or four more minutes, let everybody get in. Um, Chris Log, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Seeger is there. Hey. Of people online, Mirko. Hi guys, greetings from Schwerte. Hey Mirko. Hey Mirko. We miss Schwerte, man. Yep. We still remember your barbecue. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> that was very nice. Thirteen people online. You can you can already Ask. start asking questions, so we can uh, prepare for that. If you have some questions, you already got three at least in advance, so... But we want to prioritize people who are here, but if we yep. get a, a slow spot, we'll go ahead and cover those other questions too, of course. Mac P. Dave says, right. Who's hey, Mac P. Dave? That's uh, Lieutenant Colonel General Admiral Dave. He's awesome, dude. Where is Ronnie? <laughs> Who's you Ronnie? know he's hiding. <laughs> you know he's hiding over in... Uh, Ronnie is uh, Ross. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ross Hudson. We have the first question. What is the biggest animal you could kill using only jujitsu? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, me personally or just anybody using jujitsu? Um, I mean, anything that, uh, you know, has a neck, you can get around. Um, you know, given if you could get around it. <laughs> So, you know, your chance of jumping on the back of a tiger and holding on and choking it, it's not very high. Mag um, Magby Dave says an elephant. An elephant. I don't know, you've got to have pretty long arms to get around that neck of that elephant. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, what I would say is everybody go out and try, find something, you know, <laughs> big. Um, start kind of in the, start small, start with a wolverine. Okay, then if you survive the wolverine, you can work on to like a timber wolf from there, maybe a grizzly. There, maybe you can branch out to uh, big cats, jaguars. So, we have already some questions. Uh, first, show us the wrist lock from the side control. And Mirko asked a question from me what to focus on if you academy is closed because of corona lockdown in particular and then chris is asking go to self-defense technique go to self-defense technique okay so we want to start with what um, we can start with um i guess we'll start with uh Mirko's question so we don't have to do anything so people are still okay. catching coming in okay um the the Every jiu-jitsu technique is made up of movements, right? So I would say really perfect the movements. A lot of times when people come into class and they're practicing the movements, it's boring. They don't want to do it. They want to get right into the cool stuff. So you see them and they come in and they're going, you know, uh, break fall, whatever, stand up in base really badly, you know, come in, do some bad shots, um, do bad bridge and rolls. I would say, really master those, especially for me personally, um, master the ability of techniques that turn you over. Either getting up from sitting, you know, working, threading your knees, really mastering the ability to turn your hips over. Because honestly, the questions I always get later is everybody goes, I'm always stuck on bottom. How do I get off on, how do I get up from being on, stuck on bottom? And it usually comes down to the ability of not being able to get on their side or turn. So you can even do things as silly as, you know, kind of 
putting weight on you or having somebody in your family just lay on you and practicing, you know, not trying to muscle, but really start to work out on your side. Here, see I'm on my toes, my knees pull under, really practicing that. That's probably gonna be the biggest return on investment as far as movement drills. Okay, you don't have to practice a bunch of spinning, jumping around movements. You get plenty of that in class. I would say practice those movements. There was the wrist lock one? Yeah, wrist lock. Show us the wrist lock from the side control. Okay, so let's cover this really quickly. Can you chill it out? I'll be on the picture. So, I'm not sure this looks like this one. When you say wrist lock from side control, there's actually two. I can wrist lock this arm, obviously, and I can wrist lock this one. Same way with an arm lock. I can attack the arm here, I can attack the arm there. So I have wrist locks of plenty on this side and wrist locks on this side. I'll cover this one. Um, I'm gonna give you guys like a super secret thing, and it's a very minor thing, but this is why I've caught so many people with this one wrist lock. I kind of call it the, uh, the cookie jar, right? When somebody goes in, they grab a big bunch of cookies, and then their hand gets stuck in, and they don't want to let go of the cookies to get their hand out, but they're stuck because they won't let go of the cookies. So this is kind of the same thing, okay? So, the importance is how I set it up. Right, because he's gonna feel like there's an escape, and he's gonna go halfway in and realize it's stuck, and by that point, it's too late. So the important thing is, we're here, I want to keep my ear on his shoulder. It's also a big part of my pressure game, okay? If I'm like this, and he can lift the shoulder even a little bit, he can start exerting a lot more force, because you're strong where? Where I look. Where you look and where you face. So the more that his shoulder is up, facing this way, push me now, he has more strength, okay? So if I do this, there's actually space for him to start to lift his shoulder a little bit, yeah. Come back. So I put my ear on his shoulder. Now he wants to lift his shoulder. Here, it's a lot harder. Okay, the other thing is, when my chin is facing straight down, bring your hand in front of my, under my neck. Because my chin is like this, my neck is like this, his hand slides all the way through. But when I turn my head, it's like a cave. It closes at the end. He's gonna start to get his hand in and it's gonna get stuck. Okay, it's not going to be able to go all the way through. So by having my head this way, and he starts to feed his hand in, it gets about right there and it gets stuck. Just like this. So I don't need to, a lot of people grab the elbow, grab the elbow. I don't do any of that. Okay, just when I feel it starting to go in, I'm going to drive in. So come back. I'm here a lot of times, come back. He'll try to bring his hand around this way. Look at my head, I follow him. And he can't. And see how he kind of baits him to come back this way. So I go this way, then he brings it back, and then I catch on. Sometimes I'll catch the elbow, but right here, it's a very quick lock. It's so kind of tricky that I catch people all the time, and they think it's an accident, like they did it to themselves. Okay, so he's here, he tries to run around, I keep my head down, I have my ear on his shoulder, he comes in. It's a very quick, he gets his hand caught in the cookie jar. It won't go any deep. Very important, again, chin is not down because the hand will slide all the way through. My ear is on his shoulder because if he's able to lift his shoulder and push me about this way, even if I have my head this way, he's going to probably be able to sneak it through. So my ear is on his shoulder. He tries to bridge into me. He tries to go above my head. I follow him, he comes back. And it's right there. And that is my number one wrist lock. Okay, I've, I've submitted white belts to black belts with that. Um, so that's that's my, honestly, my A-game secret wrist lock. I can confirm that. You got me several times with that during sparring. <laughs> um, there was another one. Let me check. Uh... Oops. That one will be on my uh, wrist lock in DVD, by the way, in, in a little bit more detail. The next one was the go-to self-defense technique. Go-to self-defense technique. Okay, so yeah. we have to decide 
On the ground or standing? Um, for me, the techniques that stop the conflict earliest are the techniques you should train the most. Right? If I'm on the ground trying to lock up a Kimura, a lot of things, I let a lot of things go bad before I got there. It's not to say we don't want to train that, because that happens. Okay? But if that's my only skill is Kimuras from half guard, then I don't have any idea what to do here. Okay? So the biggest one, it's a very simple one, it's not a technique per se, because you'll use the same concept on the ground as well. It's just maintaining the inside control. Okay? And this can be dynamic or it can be uh, low threat level. What I mean by that is if we're here and he throws a punch, here, he tries to grab me in a headlock and maintain that inside control. Okay, he tries to put his hands on me, I'm here. If he gets his hands inside my arms, now he can grab my head, he can hit me, and it is. So the trick is this, I don't do this. Let's turn this way. I don't do this because now he can get to my head, get to my face, and he does. My hands are together, not down here. This is, this is what he's gonna put me out with. Okay, so his hands are here, which sometimes I've got washing my hands, I try to grab him, it's right here. You have to practice this. I try to hit him, I try to grab him in a headlock, I can't get started with any of that. Okay? Practicing that is probably the most important thing. Okay? You'll use the same kind of concepts a bit on the ground, especially with striking, um, but that more than, you know, learning how to get out of the headlocks is good. But again, you see how we're starting to get into problems and then more problems. You know, taking a punch, getting knocked on the ground, and then having to defend. That's bad. Even if he takes me down, right? We end up on the ground. He's in a dominant position. Well, if there are other people around, I have friends, he's got to defend that. Versus I try to maybe hit him. He can do this. He can now move me, move me, clear me off, get away from more people. So for me, that inside ability to control when he's doing this, he's blocking with his forearm. He's making a hook. Now, very important, his arm is not like this. This becomes his tricep strength. Not to mention, I'm not close to his head. His arm is extending, I'm not slapping down, not slapping out. He's actually trying to hit my arm. And then he makes a hook so I can't pull away, so that he can redirect me, he can go to tight clinch, he can go to arm drags, any of this stuff from the inside control. So that is what I would say work on most. Yeah. <clears throat> Turn the head. Follow. Follow the hand with the heels. Heat. Gold. Nice wrist lock. Excellent. Uh, wrist lock DVD. <laughs> They're asking for wrist lock DVD. It's coming, guys. It's coming. I'm... I've got like 40 pages of notes on it, so it's going to be very expensive standing on the ground, everything. And it's not just going to be a bunch of techniques, you'll forget it's, it's concepts, so you can catch them from all different places. So, a McKee Dave is asking for a Roy Mars Jiu Jitsu t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I can find a place here that makes them for. I'll talk about that, but I have a lot of trouble getting shirts made over here. Oh, yeah. So, next question Could you show how to escape reverse Gatame? A lot of teachers ignore it, but it's a powerful position. Thank you. So there's actually can you turn this up? There's actually kind of two reverse case katamis that are gonna go over the one I think you're talking about. There's actually a case reverse case katami this way. Okay, but I think what you're talking about is maybe when the person is facing this way. Okay. In the screen yet. Yep. So, and this is a, there's a couple of dangers here. Let me turn this side. Let's turn this way. In this situation, if he's hugging my head, that's one situation. If he brings the arm over my head and on the ground, that's another situation. If he's under my arm, that's another situation. Okay, so, um, We'll just cover one, but I'll try to cover more maybe in the future. But I think maybe this is the one you're talking about, is it's over the head. Very common, from here, he's going to step to mount. 
maybe pull my legs, go to mount, or let's turn this way. My arm is in danger of the cute horror the whole time. Or even this leg. Okay, so we covered this a little bit last time. Uh, I have a couple options here. Let's come back to this up, please. One thing that's, that you can really mess with somebody's mind about is when they get into a dominant position, but then you don't let them out of the dominant position, and they'll start to feel like it's not a dominant position. So if I'm here, one thing I want to do is keep my elbow close. If I could, come back. I want to keep my elbow inside. So we have one escape there, but right now I'm going to say you beat my elbow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold his hip, let's turn this way just a little bit, and glue my elbow down. So now if he tries to step him out, it's very hard for him to step him out. Okay? If he wants to go back to side control, it's actually pretty hard for him to go back to side control. Now this hand comes underneath, and I turn the back of my hand on, his, on the back of his shoulder. I don't want my hand like this. If I'm like this, he can slide control my wrist, start to come here. I keep the back of my hand here, pressure this one. It's very hard. Now, we have a couple situations we can do. I can let him attempt to mount. So he tries to mount right as his foot touches the ground or gets close to the ground. That's what I'm going to bridge. From here, here. And as I bridge, I will take this arm out so I don't roll on top of it. Okay? So we're here. He tries to step him out even without this underhook. Look. This hand holding his hip makes it hard. Here. Keeping the shoulder. And go right in. So that's if my arm is out. If my arm is in, I can do the same thing. Now I'm going to drop my leg. He starts to come over. I bring my leg underneath. So I'm just doing a nice knee elbow. Now very important, turn this way. Look at my leg. If it's like up, or it's even down, I'm gonna have trouble with this. Right now my knee is not on the ground. So it's gonna be hard to get under. I turn so that my knee is glued. Now it's, it's, it's like a wedge. My hand, my knee can slide under. So in this situation, I've got my elbow in. He starts to mount. I come underneath, then we can start to work. Okay. So those are a couple um, ones you can do. Hopefully that will help. Kinetics BJJ, was that helpful? Yeah. On the guillotine code, I love the visor concept to stop the underhook. Could you show a bit on that angle to set the choke up off of the visor once you stop the underhook escape? Are you talking about from side control? I think we're talking about from side control. Um, I don't know. Tim, are you talking about the side control one? On the guillotine code, I love the visor concept to stop the underhook. Could you show a bit on that? Doesn't say anything. I think maybe this is what you're talking about. Turn this way, please. Is when he gets the underhook here, my ability to pin him is going to be very difficult. Also, by the way, this is really important. If I stay facing him, he's going to be able to come around my legs. Okay, so even I come here. Even if he bridges onto me and I fall back to try to go to guard, he's going to be able to clear to that side. So even if I grab the guillotine on the way, it would, he would escape. So I want to switch my hips to face his legs, so my guard is basically facing him. So when he comes, he has the underhook, I want to reach and sit. Now turn this way, please. Very important, when I say sit, I'm, I'm not being truthful. Basically, say I see people sitting like this. Do you feel much pressure on your head? No. Okay. Also, again, he can maybe clear this leg and jump. Okay. Here, come back. One thing is, I'm also about the same level as him. I want to be higher. So I'm going to be up. My hips are on the ground. My knee, though, stays on the ground because I cannot let him slide underneath me. So my knee is up. Does that make sense? 
So now he tries, and now what happens is all my weight resting on its head. Okay, so this is a, a increasing the choke. Okay. Um, we'll cover the choke mechanics another time, but mostly this slows it down. So I go like this, bridge traps in me. I'm not gonna go, <coughs> stop it, come back. When I switch, I go here, not bridge me. Here. Okay, and if he does manage to bridge into me because I'm here, I'm able to move away because I'm not sitting on my butt trying to scoop. I'm actually here so I can move away. And then the finish, turn this way with the He gets the other hook. As soon as he gets the other hook, I switch. My knee is touching him, my hips are off the ground. From here, I don't like to go the other hook, I'll go the other hook. I step, glue, I'm bridging, reaching, and finishing the, the uh, guillotine. Hopefully, uh, maybe that was what you were asking about. Uh, it was from the half guard. What's that? The technique he was asking for was from the half guard position. Oh, okay. Okay, one more. Or side. Half guard or side. <laughs> the half guard gives me. Okay, so. Again, a lot of times, there's sort of two positions from half guard I tend to play. Um, one where I kind of sit back, and you'll see my weight, I'm actually sitting on this leg, so if he tries to do anything, my leg is, if I'm up like this in the middle, yeah, I have to deal with all those problems. I think my hand is controlling this hip, my elbow is in. So we try to bring his knee inside. He tries to bring it around the top. I don't have to deal with that knee shield. Now, a lot of times I'll bait the guy here, and then when he goes for the underhook, here. Now, again, he wants to turn me this way. So as he goes for the underhook and sits up, I'm gonna let go. And I need to drive my weight this way. I don't want to fall this way. So I drive my weight this way. Almost to put my head on the ground. Okay, now he uses the underhook. Here. Then from here, when I switch my hips, I sit back to that same position. If he has his guard closed, close your guard. Then, take my knee out. Back over here. Okay, let's do it from the same. I'm playing this game, I'm back, one thing, this way. I control this arm, so I don't have to worry about deep half guard, any of this stuff. So I'm, I'm monitoring this arm, and I give him that opening. So when he goes, I catch, I drive, head on the ground, toes on the ground, I switch, pull him up on his side. He can tell you right now, this is I can probably finish the choke right here. And I free, and then we're here. Okay. Maybe, hopefully, that's the one. There's, I don't mean to be uh, evasive. Just, it's like five and a half hours long, and I'm not sure. Hopefully, that's the one. There are no more questions right now, but we can talk about the ones we got before. Okay. okay. So the first one was. How to make your guard position more stable so the people have issues opening it? Right. Okay, so. Tim, we will come back to your questions right after that, okay? Is that touch you, Tim? No. Tim C H G. What's that? Tim uh, C H G. Yeah, Tim Hufford. Okay. okay. Tim, if I if I don't get it exactly, you can always message me. He just write another question, but we can't go over that in front of you. Also, Tim is a really good looking man. Really? Yeah. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, close guard. 
couple things to understand. How many uh, open guard, I mean, how many closed guard passes are there? None. There's zero closed guard passes. Okay. What I have to do is unlock his legs, open his guard first. Therefore, every pass is an open guard pass. Okay. If you just automatically play open guard, you just took away half my job for me. Okay. You made it easy. Okay. So get in the habit of not opening your guard unless you decide you want to do it. And you decide you want to do it when you have a game plan. What happens is people get frustrated and then they just open the guard because they want to start figuring out what to do. Well, at this point, once he opens the guard to figure out what he wants to do, I'm free to move. I no longer have the threat as much of a threat. I can go this way too. Okay, I can go around. Okay. So what happens is most people get here and they look at it as a defensive position, right? I'm defending him opening my guard. He had to have the mindset of being offensive. Right? But first, we covered this a little bit last time. If I go like this, can I open your guard? No. No. Almost always, with a rare exception we'll show in a minute, I have to use my hands to open the guard. So this hand is usually controlling him, closing the distance. It's moderating the distance, but this is unlocking the legs. Okay. So one thing that I will do often first, let's cover it, let me do this. Is I just don't let him unlock his leg. I want him to get frustrated. So we go here, if one hand is forward, one hand is back, I'm gonna double up on the sleeve, keep it in. I'm gonna strain my body so my body's on ramp. I'm gonna pull his grip straight towards me. I'm not keeping my hip bent where I pulled down. Now, I'm not over here messing with this because by the time I do this, here, okay, I'll cover this in a minute. I will do this sometimes. But I want to clear this off every time he starts to try to open my guard that way. I'm going to start addressing this arm, okay? Now, um, once I can do that, if I'm like this, am I a threat to you at all? Okay, first I need to be upsetting his balance as much as possible. What happens is people try to do this, keep your balance, and they go use your legs, and I am using my legs. I can't break his posture. Okay, as long as he's sitting down, he has good posture. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not pulling, I'm lifting. So my legs, I'm going to cross my feet, I pinch my knees a little bit, I lift him up and bring him. So over here, he's trying to pass, he's trying to do things. Here, every time. Here. I can use this, I can break this grip. Here. Now, I need to be a threat. As simple as this is, this is a threat. He has to start to worry about this. Okay. If try to, if you're having trouble in the beginning, focus on submissions where I don't want to cross my feet. If I'm focused on triangles, he can often just wait for me to try to throw a triangle and pass. He can try to wait. For me to open my guard. So notice Kimura, armbar, guillotine, triangle, on the platform. I have to open my guard for all of those. Right? So a lot of times a guy is just gonna wait, or he's gonna make you so nervous that he's about to open your guard that you go for it anyway. Learn to keep your guard closed, get your hand in the collar, start playing the, see now he's we call I call it a controlling priorities. Right? You should always be controlling your opponent's priorities. Let me explain what I mean by that. I use this analogy quite a bit. And I use this if you roll with me, my top game. Right now, what's his priority? Escaping. Escaping. Right? What about now? Surviving. So, dealing with this, right? He deals with that, and it's kind of free. I start attacking him with this. I don't even have to do anything much. I can just put my hand here for a second. Now escape moved down his priority list. So it's easier to hold him down. I don't have to focus on just holding him down. I just throw him a little bit. It can be a real thing. It can be a little bit of an imaginary thing, right? Um, generally, the things I get him to focus on is loss of position, pain or discomfort, threat submission or unbalancing, right? So that whatever it is he wants to do, i.e. Get a, get a pass, escape side control, his that priority moves down a list because he's got to address a more immediate problem. Okay, so if I just try to hold you in side control, and then you're starting to escape, and I'm like, no, I gotta hold you, I gotta. 
Okay? But if I make them think about something else, oh, here, now it's good. Yeah, look. I'm going to start making them think about something else. Same thing here. And here. Every time he's trying to do something, making them think of something else. Now he's focused on this arm. Okay? If he goes. So, generally, I would say close guard, collar attacks, really work on those, sleeve choke. Okay? This. Bravo chokes, cross collars, or really work his, start getting his arm across your body. While we work on that, you try to pull back, I go with the collar. And here I start working, because he's got to address this. He cannot pass my guard. If he tries to pass my guard with the arm here, I'm push him back. He's just going to give me his back. And in both those situations, I don't really have to open my guard. So I would say, Really focus on those, clearing that backhand, and working the arm across. So these were the two questions we had. Yep. How to make the guard more secure yep. and the game plan for the attacks. Right. So the third question was we got is a good way of opening the guard of right. the opponent. Let's see if there are any questions first here and then we'll cover that as our So you have a lot of questions already? Good. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's finish that one. Then we can go with the questions. The, the guard position. There is no question to the guard position right now. Maybe there will be later some. Wow. Okay. We will finish that one. Then we will come back to the questions. Okay. So, yeah. this was uh, kind of the go to guard pass on my team for a long time. One of the main ones. And it still is. It's a very powerful one, no gi, um, gi. Um, because you actually don't have to use the hand. I told you, most of the time, first has to use the hand. And it's a good one if you're, if the guy's very active or mobile, um, and you have trouble kind of keeping him in place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, skip that just a little bit. I'm going to find the gi lapel, if he has a gi lapel. Now in the middle, I'm going to put my fist in his armpits. We call this the violator pass or the log splitter pass. I want to make sure my elbows are in so that he doesn't swim inside or pull my elbow out a little bit, start wrist locking me. I'm here. And there is a little bit of a wrist lock for us. You've got to be cautious of that. Now, his legs are on my hips. I actually want his legs high. Normally, we don't want that. Okay? So I'm going to start to walk my body back. See how he wants to adjust his legs? Now this is the hardest part, people get, don't get the angle right. Right now I keep my head up, I keep my head down. I want to be able to tripod. I'm going to walk up. Notice my legs are like this, but this isn't a sprawl. I'm here. My feet are wide, my butt is in the air. Okay, here. It's very important that I get this angle right. I'm not like this. Okay, so one more time, we're here. I'm pushing him away the whole time. I walk up. Now, can I get you left up for a second? Here's the hardest part, biggest mistake I see people do with this. It requires a little bit of flexibility, but not too much. Can I get you back up just a little bit? And when I'm here, I want to bring one leg. I can adjust this leg right either in, and it has to be straight up and down. I want my knee either directly over my foot or even a little bit behind. The biggest mistake is people go like this. And they're on the ball of their foot, their knees in front. Well, now he's just going to sit on my leg. I want to do this, so he slides down my leg. So you really have to master the ability to go here, here. Okay, not like this. Biggest mistake on this pass. So I'm here. Scoop my head down. Scoop back and step up here and just. Put my foot now in this way. I shouldn't feel his leg, his body on my leg. I actually want to put it back a little bit. Now I'm not going to sit down, I'm going to sit back. This foot is going to tuck under, but I sit back. Okay, you see why it's called the violator? Come back up. If he's really keeping his legs closed, when I go here and I sit, my arms slide back, 
elbows inside, and we're here. Now my elbows are in good position, so we try to play open guard if we can. I'm in a good position, I can stack, do whatever. Yeah. But in this situation, come here. He's trying to choke me with his arm, trying to do anything. It's really hard for me to get started anymore. Just step back, and we're right here. And I would say, really work on that one. If it's no gi, put your hands in the armpits, thumb up. Okay, um, that's been a real good go-to pass for me and many on my team for a long time. So here we go with the questions again. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's scroll a little bit back. Don't turn it off. I try my best. Okay, Tim again, the yeah. good looking guy. Good stuff. I was talking about when the guy gets the underhook and you use the grade towards their, towards their hip angle yeah, uh, okay. of the visor. Gotcha, that's right, okay. I kind of thought that this was, uh, come back. I honestly have two options I do from half guard and even side control when somebody gets a good underhook. Okay? So let me talk about that. Turn this side. Yeah. When the guy gets the underhook, see how his arm is bending and reaching across my back and I'm above his elbow? This is really bad for me. Okay? I want to be below his elbow. And the straighter I can make his arm, the better. Meaning, keeping his hand down. Because right now, lift your hand in the ceiling. Yeah. Lift your hand in the ceiling. Yeah. Lift your hand in the ceiling. So the more that I can get down there, the better. Now, turn this way. A common counter to the underhook is to go for the wizard. Maybe try to grab the gi, start setting up dorses. The only problem for me is Sometimes he can still reach across my back here, but also shrimp out and bring that bottom knee through. He can start bringing the knee through. Okay? So, and there's not a lot of pressure. You see how his arm is bent. Okay? So, one thing I, I try to do a lot of times with guys is he gets the underhook. I start. I want to make them afraid to do whatever they do right. I'm going to punish them. I don't want to go, oh, okay. I'm going to start attacking that arm right away. Okay, same thing here. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my arm towards his hip and turn my palm in. And I'm straightening my arm. Okay, what this is going to do is lock his arm out. It's going to kill the underhook. And what I'm looking to do is put my hand right in his hip flexor. Because that's going to act like a block. I do this a lot of times. Guy gets an underhook. I put my hand here, because then I try to go to guard. My hand is blocking. Try to remember. Here. If I just stay up here, I gotta do with that. So I'm doing the same thing just from half guard. So he gets the underhook. See how he's starting to bend? I come right at the elbow and I turn my palm. And I watch my hip. I turn my hip out. So I'm, all, I'm, I'm trying to arm lock this arm. See how his legs pop up and keep your legs close? I put more pressure. Put me in guard. Here. So I'm turning my body now. I'm not leaning back like it rolled this way. So even if he grabs my leg and tries to lift me, my hip is pressing down and this hip is about over lifting. From here, I can grab the collar or the back of the head. I'm clearing. My hand's still at his hip. Now I'm going to do our eagle of freedom. Both hands open. I open. Block. So the pressure is here, and I really want to emphasize it. I'm straining and torquing that arm. As if he came here, and I went like this on his arm. So he gets the underhook, and I'll do this a lot of times. If he gets the underhook, usually I'd want to slide back to kill the underhook. But sometimes he goes faster. And I come here, and then I start, if I'm a little high, I've got to work my body back. And keep your guard closed. So fast, right? right here. Don't take your hand out. My hand is still blocking his hip. 
If he tries to shrimp or move, really start tight. Control the head, lock the hip off. And you go with freedom. Okay? What's on the gear you Uh yeah, because I can here. Turn this way. What I need for gear teeth is the guy to be on the side. Where are you right now? On my side, yeah. So let's I catch. I go, I freeze you on your side, just waiting like mm -hmm. candy to be taken. Okay. Tell Mozzie I said hi. Huh? Okay. Can you show the dirty Kimura from closed? I feel like I'm missing some key details on the positioning. Okay. We'll do a couple details. Okay. So, how many joint locks are there? Three. It's only three joint locks. Okay. So there's no difference between the omoplata and the Kimura in terms of the effect on the arm. It's a reverse bent arm lock. Okay. I want you guys to really focus on that. It's not about this grip, that grip, right? The joint is either going to be broken, uh, attacked rotationally, straight, or compression. Okay, so this, the, the hold will matter in the sense of what options you have, how you get into it. But as long as it's a strong controlling hold, it doesn't matter. So the dirty Kimura for you guys who haven't seen it is, let's turn this way is instead of me holding the wrist and going this way, I keep the underhook, I curl, hold the wrist, no thumb, hold my own arm. The reason I like this so much is when I do this, I lose the underhook. So if I don't get this, I don't have the underhook. If I lose this, I still have the underhook for pinning and control, as well as I can go straight arm lock. So, remember here, And this is a good one to be is maybe reaching back, or I can get my arm in. I can go here, double elbow control if I need to. I can reach under and lock here. One thing I will do a lot, turn this way, is when the guy is just keeping his head down and kind of playing this real tight stalling game. Okay, he's maybe it's a turn and he's up by a couple points. Um, maybe it's in class and you set it down and the guy is just holding on. Okay, so from here, I'm going to reach my arm in, make it underhook close to the elbow. Here, and keep his head. From here, I'm going to start to frame on his head. And again, I'm, I'm you know, who's cool? Always cool, right here. Okay, that sounds like it's such a Jason Goldberg thing. Okay, I'm going to start to push the head as I curl and bring my foot to his hip. Very important. If the foot stays outside, you can turn to face me again. Once the foot is on the hip, I'm here. I'm curling, this is really important, I'm not pulling. I pull with your punch arm bar, that's fine. But I'm doing a bicep curl. My foot is not over his back this way. I'm pressing down on his hip. Knee press, grab the bicep, come here, here, pull. Now this is the important part. I don't just rotate. I stretch my body away, then I rotate. And then you wrist lock. So let's do it from the same. So he's, he's kind of playing this game. He's got his arms on my bicep. He's starting to play this game. He may be best with his neck. I make a hook. I press the head. Move my hip out. Control. Lock. Stretch. And then the motion is not arms. It's just rotating my body. Ouch. <laughs> this, be careful when you do this one. It's a lot tighter than a normal keyboard. It is. Uh, Seeger, in a self-defense scenario, would you say that if you were to apply an arm lock from, say, side control or mount, that there is a risk of being bitten on the left? I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you always have to worry about bites when you are dealing with um, a real self-defense situation. Something we don't really train to do. Now, um, you can say, well, it's not that big a deal, but obviously bites can become infected. And these days, who knows what the next virus is? It could be a zombie one, so you don't want to take that lightly. Um, can you get your way down?
One thing you can do, this is a standard one. This is the leg he's, on, the leg he's gonna bite, obviously, right? One thing I can do, turn this way, is understand I have to isolate his shoulder. Let's see if I can switch to it. But he's got a couple of escapes. Getting his elbow into the ground, clearing his leg off and sitting up. Okay? So this is a little bit uh, strange because it's going to break some of the rules, but one thing I can do from a self-defense situation is look. Both my feet come over here. Now it's very important if I stay like this, sit up. Yep. So I want to turn my knees on his chest. And so now he's trying to sit up here. And then I'm going to send the arm off. Let's turn this way. Good job. Good job. It's kind of a variation of my favorite arm lock, which is I bring this leg behind the head. Fucking, you're not going to escape once you get caught in this. Okay. But again, you can bite this leg. So I can actually take this foot underneath his head, you see? But my knees, the airport, my knee is up, he's going to come around this side. Okay. But my knees are this way. So now I try to sit up and come around this side. It's here. By the way, uh, for those of you guys who know Cody Bubbly back in North Carolina, that was the first uh, submission he ever copied with, was that exact arm lock. So it does work. <laughs> Hi, could you please demonstrate the most efficient way to do the backdoor mount escape? Okay, so we have a couple options, right? Um, you can put the foot in the belt, if they have a belt chin. It's very hard to stop. If not, you have to go to the armpits. Um, right now, we'll do it with the belt so you guys can see it's maybe a little easier. And the mechanics of the finish will be exactly the same. Actually, you are, you're the only one that needs it. People think this requires a lot of flexibility. It actually doesn't. If you can do a back roll, you can do this one, especially with the belt. So let's turn with you just a little bit at this angle. Okay. So he's here. Now right now he's kind of low, which most of the time I want to keep him on my hips. But either he slid up or I kind of bump him up. Now I'm going to put my thumbs in his belt. Okay. From here I'm going to lift a little bit, lift my hips. Here. Notice I'm not doing this, keeping my hips on the ground. I bump, lift my hips, put my foot in the belt. Now my hands go to his armpit. I don't push him straight up, I push him at a slight angle. Straighten my leg, my knee inserts. Okay, so if he tries to come back on top, my foot is still in his belt, my knee is here, now I can take my knee out, come up. Okay, so really, once I go here, I extend my foot, then I roll over one shoulder. One more time. This is actually one reason I don't actually like to play very high amount, because this is a very hard one to stop. So he's here, thumbs in. I'm gonna lift my hips a little bit to bump him. Lift my hips, foot in the armpit. Hands on the chest or on the rib cage. Now as I do this, I extend. I look over my shoulder, my knee slides in. Obviously I have the foot lock too, or I can come out and start working on our pass. Okay. What is your side control escape of choice? Okay. Especially for heavy opponent, that's high cross side position. From the what? Um, side cross? High, high cross side position. Okay. And he's high and heavy. Okay, so when I came up on the team, uh, I have to understand first off, there is no side control escape. The side control is a lock. I, I talk about this all the time with my students, locks and keys, right? You have to understand which lock you're stuck in in order to understand what key you need. That's why when I see a video that says the perfect side control escape, that's idiotic, okay? There are many different kinds of side control, even just the ones on his knees. Are his arms this way? Are they this way? Are they both on this side? Are they both on this side? Each of those is a different lock. So the key has to be different. 
Okay, that's very important to understand. So generally, finding the side control, it's really important to understand. If my arm is on this side and my arm is on this side, i.e. this way, can you bring your head this way? No. Can you move your hips out this way? No. So he can't turn to go to his knees very easily. Now if I'm this way, try to turn to your knees, yeah, look. Now if I try to go pull your head this way, bring your legs in this way, like for guard pull, for guard recovery, doesn't happen. Because I'm blocking his head going this way and his hips going this way. He can't rotate this way, but he can rotate that way. And vice versa when I'm here. Does that make sense? When I'm here, when I'm here, these are also different locks. So you have to know which way the, you can move and where the open door is. Now, when I came up on the, my team, we really worked on underhooks a big time, rather than framing in front of the neck so much, which is much more common now. Because when he's under the neck, can you, he, can't go to, he can't go to his knees, but he can go to guard. Right? And that's the correct escape for this, because his head can move that way, his hips can move this way. Okay? But he can't go to his knees. Okay? Conversely, when I'm here, he can go to his knees, but he can't go to guard. Okay? It's very important to understand. If he has an underhook, though, he can go to both. Right? Because that underhook is going to clear off this ability. Okay? It's going to open up enough space on this side for his head to come in. Okay? So you have both options with the underhook. If you go this frame in front of my neck, I know which one you're going to do, depending on my arms. Okay, so I like the underhook. So, when I'm here, okay, getting the underhook is a trick. Yeah, we're going to kind of uh, escape that for the moment. Okay, and I'll cover kind of my escape. Okay, now I know I'm, I'm getting rid of the hard part, but here, when I have the underhook, there's a couple things I'll show you. Two sort of ways to escape the underhook. One is I'm not bridging into him. Okay, it's very important. If I try to push into him, there's too much weight here. I need to get his head for one thing on the same side of his hips. As long as his head is opposite his hips, he's going to be heavy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge. I'm going to reach up and then across. I'm not reaching across his back here. Okay, now I move my hips out, and then I can go. Okay, so we can go to guard, we can go to the leg. I'm going to show you the leg. This actually isn't the one I use all the time, but it's, I think it's actually one that you should learn. Um, and I'm going to show you my variation of the leg. Okay, so I'm here. I bridge up and across. Because I want him as low on my arm as possible. And I'll show you a variation of that in a second. I move my hips up. Don't go really far. This is where people have trouble. They go all the way out here, and now he's falling on top of me, and I'm stuck on the knee. I don't make a slight angle change. Okay. I do not want to grab at the knee. Okay. If I grab at the knee, he can dictate what angle he's at. Now we want to dominate the angle. Okay. So let's turn. Um, we'll do this. One. Here, I bridge. Here, now look, my hand slides down and I catch the ankle. I'm not catching the knee. I catch the knee sprawl. Yeah. I catch the ankle. I'm on my toes. My foot travels under. I come up. Now look, my other hand, I lock at the knee. Okay? Because what he wants to do here. Is he wants to square up with me and sprawl. But by holding this ankle, and I'm pulling it this way, I'm holding the knee, turn him and sprawl. Even if he hits the wizard, tries to do something here. My head is on the inside, so he's trying to guillotine me. There's no guillotine. Okay, here. Okay, from there, you know, I have options. I can step over, take him down. So, I'm not doing this and going for the leg like this. I teach beginners this is perfectly fine, but now I'm here. Okay. Now, let me explain about this. I don't fight my opponent where they're strong. Okay. If you change the angle, right? For instance, I've heard about this all the time. Hold your arm straight up. 
If I try to push, it's too strong here. But he's weak this way. People are only strong in one direction at a time. Okay, so he's pushing his weight down on me, and I'm pushing back into his weight. So look, even if he gets your arm a little bit lower, even if he's killing this underhook, and remember, a bad underhook is worse than no underhook. Okay, if I try to, I have trouble. Okay, I have two things I do. I'm giving away a lot of my tricks. One, I put my hand on my knee here, and I'm going to knee here. Look at my arm, it's straight up. Put your weight back on me. Here, if my arm goes like this, put your weight back. Okay. Now I'm on my side, you should go. Here. The other one I call the zombie. Okay. I take my finger and I point it to the ceiling straight up. Not over here, not over there. Hold me down. Hold me down. Here. Now I'm pumping straight up, not into him. So he's sliding down me. He can't put his weight on me. Okay? The moment my arm comes across his back like that, he can start to put his weight on me. There are times I'll go low on the hip. And I do this a lot. This actually one I use most. But only once I've cleared him close to my shoulder. Now I can go here. Now he does whatever. Here. Okay? So hopefully that helps. The important part is getting that arm reaching straight up, not trying to bridge across into him. In self-defense, oh sorry, in self-defense scenario, would you say that when applying an arm lock? Oh, we had that already. <laughs> He's asking for the, uh, the guard escape you shot. Uh -huh. Can I get the pass and still keep my friends? <laughs> no, you can only choose one. That's something I preach all the time, right? Okay. Look, you can always make a new friend. Okay. Get the guard pass, friends come later. The, another one, another guy says, no need friends when have guard pass. Exactly. <laughs> Um, in terms of keeping points of contact, would you recommend trying to switch to lasso guard when they break your guard when kneeling? And do you think switching to De La Hiva is a good option? Um, not dodging the question? If they break your guard while standing. You got break the my guard while standing. So, um, Okay, so I spoke about this uh, before, I don't think I did in this one. You should have four guards, right? A long range guard, a mid range guard, a close guard, and a deep guard. Okay, so the opponent has to pass four guards. Ideally, in some ways, um, not always, but the more of those you can make him pass, the, the more time you have to work, the harder it is for him. So if I just start right away jumping into a deep guard, he really just has that one guard to pass. Whereas if I play an open guard type thing, um, he's got to pass the open guard, then he's got to pass the mid guard, then he's got to pass the close guard. Hopefully, he's got to go through all of those. I mean, sometimes he can jump past them, if, but if you're good, you're going to develop an ability to recognize when to switch from the one to the next. The hard part of standing is you can't obviously keep a close guard, a mid guard can be hard. What I mean by these, by the way, a far guard is simply I have at least, he's behind at least one foot. Okay, mid guard, he's behind at least one knee. Close guard, he's past my knees, but my legs are around him. Okay, and then deep guard is I'm all the way underneath. Okay, X guard, deep half, knee shield, butterfly, close guard, traditional half guard, and then the long range guards are things like spider or daily hiva. Those are fantastic guards. They're tools, you have to decide, you know, one, are you confident at it? And two, what is its use? The reason that the Daily Hiva became so popular, everything develops, there is no best situation. It's something changes, so everything else changes. Okay. So what happened is people started standing a lot more to pass, to open the guard and pass. When they do, most people pass with one leg forward. So obviously you have to develop a way to deal with this. And things like the Daily Hiva, where I can control the angle of this front leg 
um, became very, very popular to deal with this. And you're actually seeing people now going back to passage low again to kill the daily diva, because guys got so good at it. Okay. So what you'll notice, the problem with the daily diva a lot of times is actually this way, because this is the one that kind of keeps control of the distance. A lot of times he's going to want to clear that leg first, and then start to clear the daily diva hook. So it is a fantastic one. Okay. One thing is, don't assume he's going to open your guard. Right? I see people do this. They hold the sleeves down here, double sleeve control. It's like the, the crack of jujitsu these days. People just play here a little bit. Well, stand up. And now just posture all the way up. I can't. It's very hard for me to control his posture. Even if I hold on to the sleeve, I don't control his posture. So I tend to not like to play just double sleeve. I'm going to keep his posture here. Or play behind the elbow, so now he tries to stand up. By the way, can I stand up? Open my guard. Right. Even here, he opens the guard now, that's okay because I can start playing here. Okay. But if you do find yourself here and he opens, whether it's standing or not, yeah, I mean, this is one thing when I do the, the lasso. Notice, if I shoot my leg, I do this, he's going to pass. He's going to break this hole. So one thing I want to do is, it's about keep, keeping posture, right? If I do this, there's no posture control. I shoot my leg over, and I shoot it through as far as I can. I hook my foot, and then I curl my knee back. My elbow is here. My hand is here. So now he wants to posture up. It's here. And then we have all the options. Okay? Here. So, you know, lasso guard is a great guard. It's a really annoying guard to pass, but make sure you're not just playing it poorly. You know, get that deep lasso. Because um, now he's got to pass that, that far guard. Okay? And the danger thing about the lasso guard, though, is when he passes, right, you're good at this. Victor's become very good at this. Okay? Even, by the way, if you got side control on me, if you were in a tournament crisis, this wouldn't count as side control. He's got to clear this first. Okay. As well as, as a bicep turn. But here, yeah, look. He thinks he's passed, he hasn't passed. Because he's got to clear that. I'm still controlling his, his uh, body mechanics with that hook, with that lasso hook. Um, hopefully that it helped. I'm going to be sure. I want to make sure it does. There you go. Uh, that's great, thanks. Uh, Maestro Marsh, if I invite you to a barbecue and you see me putting hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill, what attack from standing would you hit to punish me the most? <laughs> Who's that? Letter 10. Who's Letter 10? Oh. Well, um, what I would do is probably call out some real old school redneck country dudes I know, <laughs> and then uh, next thing you know, your your uh, your yard will be filled with uh, old uh, you know sixties, fifties, seventies Studebakers and Ford pickup trucks, <laughs> and uh, you know you just have to spend the rest of the day listening to Molly Hatchet. <laughs> Could, uh, could you show your go-to north-south choke setup? North-south choke setup, yeah. Can you take the camera? For those of you who guys don't understand, the barbecue is not grilling, okay? Um, In Germany it is. <laughs> words have meanings, okay? <laughs> If you're going to do a barbecue, it means you're going to go out and spend the entire night sitting out uh, by an old oil drum, okay, um, or, or a smoker. Um, anyway, what I like about the North-South Kimura is it's a catch-22. He gets on his side, that's what I needed for the guillotine. He defends the guillotine by going to his back, he gives me the North-South guillotine. Um, I don't do it like a lot of people. Um, the main thing is I, I don't want my weight on his chest. Okay, so if I'm like this with my shoulder on his chest, the weight is not doing the choke. 
you're, this, uh, when I teach this a lot of times, people are surprised. They think, it, the person tapped, why did they tap? I didn't do anything. Okay, because it's your body weight that's doing the choke. Okay. So I want his uh, neck right in my armpit. Okay. Um, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to come here, I'm going to reach, I'm going to shoot my arm, I'll show you my setup in a second. I'm going to shoot my arm all the way through. And now, very important, right now I'm on his, I'm exactly on his trachea. Perfect. If I move too far to the north and I start turning his head, now I'm choking on the side of his neck, he's not going to get choked. So I only go to north or maybe slightly past. Okay, this way. And for me, I do this one arm. I don't like to lock my hands. The moment I lock my hands, start turning on your side, he's starting to escape. Okay, so let's get to this side. The choke is not really one that also the choke is not a matter of squeezing. With a lot of chokes, what happens is people flex. And when you flex, the, the structure is hard and there's spaces. Spaces are going to be his friend. I actually keep my arm relaxed, you know? I keep my arm relaxed and mold it, and then I squeeze, versus a tense, well now there's a little bit of space. So learn to keep your arm relaxed when you're shooting for a lot of chokes. And then, at the end, you'll squeeze to take that space out. But think of molding your arm, your leg, whatever, to his neck, not the intense. So, I shoot my arm through. Here, you'll see my arm is relaxed. Now, very important, I'm looking this way. If I look this way, it elevates his shoulder, takes the weight off his neck. So I'm looking this way, and I'm completely flat. I'm not on my toes driving. I want everything dead weight. Now, the way the choke works is simply this. I'm going to move away from him north. Okay? I'm not going to do anything with my hand right now, so you guys can see. What I do is I put my feet on the ground, and I scoot back. I put my feet on the ground and I scoot back. And as I scoot back, now I start tightening my arm. I start flexing. Now, what helps me scoot back and stops him turning on his side is this. If I can, I seek up his elbow and I push it into his body. So now he wants to follow me around. He can't. And it helps me move my body away. Okay? Again, my head is down looking outside. Not this one. <laughs> So the finish I use is this and this, not this. Now, how do I set it up? There's a lot of ways I set it up, but I actually got this one from Rodrigo Gracie. I like it a lot. He's got his hand in here. I'll actually pick his leg up, his head up, shoot my arm through, and then go. So I'm here. I shell his head this way with my arm. Then I shoot my arm through, notice it's straight. And then I slide back. Then I push the arm in. Move. Here. Okay. Anytime I can get his head off the ground, it freezes him. Okay. So you can do this. Here sometimes you gotta deal with the arms. A lot of times I'll do it from the north. So I'm north, I'm here, maybe messing around. I got that arm out of the way. I pick the leg up, his head up, see I set it. And then I shoot my arm through straight, and then I come through, adjust, and then put the choke in heat. Okay. So, hopefully some mechanics here will help. <sighs> Get this escaping pin instructional, no more stuck on bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on a, uh, almost done, writing up a mount escape just by itself, all mount escapes. And then I'll work on a side mount escape. With the mount escapes, I've got almost everything written and it's like 40 or 50 pages, so it's pretty expensive. Next question. <clears throat> Tips on passing guard wall with very tall opponents. Um, shoot them. I hate tall people. Uh, <laughs> some of you guys, Tim, you know, like rolling with Seth Champ. Um, the one thing you want to think about is when I'm passing tall people, trying to run around is really going to be fruitless. Because over your legs, that's the wingspan that Aircon has. But you get somebody like uh, 
um, Alex who used to train at Team Rock or Seth Sham, for instance, their legs are this. And me trying to do all that, um, it's very difficult. So what I tend to do is make myself a ball, compact. Okay, so if I can, I want to get inside his legs. Okay, I don't like to really try to do leg drags and things like this with long legs. It's just too much trouble. The advantage of long leg guys is once you pass, it's a lot more work for them to close that space off again. That's why like guys like Brandon Garner, people like that, shorter, you only it's hard to control them once you get because there's so much little space. But it's easier to get there originally. Not against Brandon, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, so what I'm gonna tend to do is get inside, okay? Even here is okay, but even this can be trouble because you see right away he's going to reverse day Kiva and all this. So I'll tend to come in and I'll control. I don't ever reach past. I've talked to my students for this time many times, um, what Camarillo told me. We address what we encounter first, we deal with it, then we move on. If I do this, well now his feet are, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna control, not his ankles, his kick away, yeah. His toes, here. And then when I move in, I'm gonna come in. And I'm keeping, as much as I can, my elbows connected to my knees. So now he's trying to do stuff, he's trying to play here. See I'm not really letting the length of his legs don't matter, bring your legs up. Here, even if he brings his legs up enough, I come here. But I don't want to play all of this. I don't want to play all of this. So often, I'm here, I can even drop. Here, and I'm staying, get used to making this force. Being able to connect your elbows to your hips or your knees, it's gonna save you a lot. So he's trying to do stuff. He's trying to play right away, as soon as I can. One of the big mistakes I see, I shouldn't say mistake, but is people pass and then they try to control. What do I mean, they go like this, right? They're so far away, okay? He cut pass. They're up like this, and now they turn and, and he's, so the moment that I can get in, oh dear, and then I'm in. Now he's trying to use the length of his legs, not a matter. Then I can start working. Here. So it's not so much a technique as a strategy. Really practice. Notice I'm not sitting like this. It's a lot like our self-defense position. Okay, when you go for the leg. Get comfortable here. Because even if he grabs me, here, and he tries to pull me or something. I'm just going to pull me right into position. He tried to push me away. Here. Okay. So, definitely avoid the kind of running around. And I know it's easy to say that, but really think of just... Here. It's like if you cycle, he just makes himself... Yeah, it's really hard for me. You get anything here. Do you ever use the restless cradle or variation of this control position and sparring? <laughs> yes, I love it. Um, well, there's a, um, I sort of call it positive and negative. You know? I can rest with the cradle on this leg. Your head here, I can rest for his cradle here, or I can have him facing me and rest for his cradle here. Um, I love it, especially because I use the guillotine so much. Like, and I do the, uh, what I call the leg fold pass. So here, turn your head this way. He turns into me, I catch this. Sometimes he'll maybe try to start, if I hold this, you know, he can get through his knees. Okay, if he's really good, he's strong. And then I can either fight front headlock or go to the guard. But sometimes I don't want to do that, right? Or sometimes I want to limit his ability to put me back in guard. So when I go here, I'll come under and lock his leg. And now he's trying to turn to his knees. Here. Not to mention, I'm a big, 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 big fan of 
leg full of passing. It's over the past number of years, it's become my go-to pass. What I mean by that is simply, I'm here, I'm going to step over, put my knee inside, underhook, control the head, go to mount. It's a very sloppy version of it, but notice, anytime I can get this leg, top leg in front, I have this, as well as, of course, the twister, but I have this pass, okay? Once I do this, it really doesn't matter. As long as I don't let him turn over or reach for my leg, I'm in a good position. Okay? So I will use this, anything I can do to slow a person down. So he's here, he gets the other hook, he's really starting to try to escape. Escape. Here. much as you can from wrestling, from any other grappling art. Um, I always tell people, you know, if you want to beat a jiu-jitsu guy, wrestle. If you want to beat a wrestler, use judo. If you want to beat a judo guy, use jiu-jitsu. Just because everybody's expecting you to react in a certain way, to grab you a certain way. And if you bring a different reaction, they're going to be late catching up or they're going to be confused. Okay? So always train wrestling. Especially because the focus on wrestling, people think, oh, it's about takedowns, and it absolutely is. But it's also about pinning. And pinning is control. And jiu-jitsu is an art of control, or it should be. And a lot of people don't train control, right? So they end up trying to jump for submissions all the time. The more you can control your opponent, the easier the submissions are, the more reliable the submissions are. So why not practice an art like judo or wrestling? Not with it. With an eye towards technique, with an eye towards takedown, of course, but with an eye towards understanding different ways of controlling and pinning someone. Because also when you pin someone, you fatigue them, you demoralize them, which means they give you more things. Okay. <clears throat> the hand on the knee detail is genius. Really it saved me a lot. I don't know why, I, this, I'm sure other people come up with it. But it's just, it's, it's saved me so much, and I don't know, I just did it one day, I think I was wrong with somebody over carrying. That's Taroy, that's from Brian Wright. Oh, thanks, Brian. Uh, which one was congrats from on, uh, Congrats on your promotion a while back, Brian. I, I sent you a message, I think, uh, but still, congrats. Um. Great details on the North South choke. Thanks. Saw your YouTube video on belt requirements. Any plans on releasing instructionals on your curriculum? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That is a good question. <laughs> Actually, um, <laughs> I'm only laughing because he and I, uh, over the past year, we've actually been shooting every technique that's in my blue belt test. Um, and, and instructional, not just me demonstrating, but little, like for instance, I mean the mount, the arm lock for mount is like 18 minutes long, just that one technique. Yep. Um, because it's, it's for my instructors to understand how I want things taught, not that there are other ways, but just so that it's consistent. Um, but I have talked, Eric and I have talked about, you know, we, we like it so much that we may actually release it as a full instructional. Yeah. Uh, because it covers the standing self-defense and the takedowns and the things I think to get a blue belt you should have. Again, everybody has their own versions. But this is the one that I consider important. And me teaching it, um, certainly more so than, you know, it's important, you know, people go, yeah, show up, that's your guillotine. They go, well, it doesn't work really well, the technique. Or they go, you know, go. Yeah, the self-defense stuff doesn't work really well. Well, yeah, if you learn it like that, of course it doesn't work. Right, so um, um, I actually just got a new camera and a new audio system. So, uh, you know, it's a uh, nice one. So uh, hopefully I will shoot all of that. And uh, we've got it written, everything written down. So that's something we're working on right now. That's right, yeah. I'm on the receiving side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it just makes it even happier. Yeah. I think there are no more questions right now. Oh yeah, do you have a favorite takedown from standing? 
Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a few. Um, the one thing I tell everybody is you don't have to have a million take counts. You want to have take counts that work off of each other. Okay. Um, so for instance, for me, a lot of times I'm looking to always get the front headlock. Because his counter is to stand up, in which case I can attack the body. So I tend to do most of my take counts off of body or front headlock or over under. Okay. Um, the two that I really like, that I use a lot, um, is this one. Okay. Because, I, because I'm good at getting the front headlock position. Um, finishing the guillotine standing can be difficult. I don't like to just pull guard with it. Okay. So we're here, we're playing whatever, and again, I snap, and I put my weight on the back of this. Notice my head is not up. My weight is here. And I go for the choke. Okay. Now, if he defends by tucking his chin or hand fighting or any of this stuff, here. I have two options. I either hold the chin, but this one, and I know I keep saying I'm working on all these things, but actually the one I've almost finished is a whole instruction on front headlock stuff. Chin strap front headlock stuff, and this is going to be kind of one of them. I can either do it with the chin, but often I'm going to use this part of my hand, keep my hand, and I'm going to put it right at his jaw, right where his mouth, his teeth would meet. Here, and I'm going to turn his face this way. Okay. At the same time, I'm going to get done with Now, this is important. I'm not trying to throw him this way. I'm actually going to, I've told him to open the door, I'm going to step and open the door. Okay, so I come here, I come here, he's defending, I'm going to step, open the door, turn his chin, open my elbow. Okay. Now, one thing I don't want to do is try to sell on the side control here, because often he'll have this arm underneath, he may try to do the ghost escape now. So, I'm here, turn the chin, step, here, I'll usually move on this side and attack the arm, here. I use that one a lot. Okay. I can also, by the way, with that one, if that leg is back a little, as I pull, this foot checks. Okay. The other one I tend to use a lot, and I can use it from the same position. He pops his head out, I get the over-under. Or if we're just playing the over-under. This is what I use a lot when I'm tired. Okay. And these are no-gi. Okay. Same idea. I step, and I turn my body. Okay. It's very important. So if he was walking forward, I step, and I turn. I'm not staying in front of him. Very important. Okay. I put the bottom of my foot here. I don't want my knee pointing up. Now what I'm not doing is throwing him over there. I'm actually going to sit. So the important thing is when I do this, I'm pulling him straight down. I don't want to do a great throw, but I have to go chase him. So I'm here, I step to the side, I hang. You notice how I'm really close to him, right away. Very important to hang your weight down. If I throw, he can step or sprawl. When I hang my leg, step, all that weight is on that leg, he can't do anything. Okay? The other one I use, I'm give you free. Put the detop on. You can do this without the detop. But I like it a lot with. So this could happen in a number of ways. And get control of the sleeve. I rush him. Here. But somehow I can get on the cross. Okay. From here, I'm going to reach. I like to go in the armpit. Okay. The nice thing about this one is, usually when I get control of this arm, what he's going to do is put his head here, dominate this angle, and then maybe start to push me off, get his arm back. This row works even if he gets his head in. Okay. If he doesn't get his head in, I'm here. I can start doing all my two old ones over the back. But he gets his head in here, here. I'm going to catch. Now, if he stays off on this side, I can still go to his back. A lot of times he's going to start to square up with me. Okay, here. I'm going to step in. I'm going to sit underneath him. And this cross leg is going to go inside his knee like a reverse butterfly hook. I have this arm, so he tries to turn it. I punch the arm. So all I'm doing is stepping in, sitting in and throw. So we're here, clear, 
Now here, I step underneath him. Sit, punch. If you can, stay behind the elbow. Okay, two invasions. My version. Hopefully those three help. Thank you very much. They're looking forward for the DVDs. A lot of thanks, no more questions. Okay. Um, let me double check one thing. He escaped. He's playing ninja. No, um, he's playing. So, no more questions. Again, if you guys have questions, you can always uh, send them to us. Hopefully, we'll do this one again, depending on, on the rules. We on have the German right rules, the yeah. laws they're having here right now. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't thank you guys enough for showing up and asking your questions. It means a lot to us. And um, for my students, uh, Jens sent me a message that he's put up even a few more videos into the uh, website so you guys can go check. That's um, right. Yep. Uh, if you guys uh, also, you know, I'm not a businessman at all, but on my sales page, S-E-L-Z, RoyMarsh.com, SDLZ.com. I do have some of my DVDs I've already done. Uh, I just did a back, back, one. Yeah. back seminar in Schwerte at Mirko School. Yeah. Um, I think it was really well. It was part of it's sort of my top back games with some details. I highly suggest it. I will eventually release a complete back game. Um, and then, of course, it has a guillotine code, it has an escaping the pins uh, seminar I did. And carry and it has a movement one that yeah, movement yep and the ones we got coming out can be the front headlock mount escapes blue full belt. blue belt full headlock every headlock that's going to be more self-defense oriented yeah for people who don't do jujitsu all it's going to be every single headlock escape um broken down in detail we're probably going to do a book with it too yeah it's a workbook in addition to this videos yep uh wrist lock is the big one um and then the pressure one is the big one that everybody's waiting on I apologize that these are taking a while. It's just, I like to write every single thing out and make sure I don't like to come in and go, okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna do an arm lock and you grab this and then, yeah, you do that. I wanna really break it down so you guys understand. Um, so even if it's not the specific technique, you can apply whatever it is I show to other, other ways of doing, finishing the same kind of journey. And yeah. That's it. Uh, That's thank it. you guys so much. We really appreciate this. Um, we'll try to edit this and put this up on the YouTubes. Um, also on Instagram. Also, also on Instagram. Immediately. I think in the next couple of minutes it will be online on Instagram. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate you guys spending uh, the evening with us. Yeah. And uh, watching uh, Eric Khan get abused. Yeah. He doesn't deserve it. He's a nice guy, but <laughs> in jujitsu. Nice people do get abused. Are we still looking for a stuntman for the pressure DVD? Uh, no, no, you're, 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 <laughs> you're going to be the one. I, no, I, I will be the one standing beside you, but when you do the pressure, we need a stuntman for that. So if <laughs> any guy out okay, there is looking good. like me, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you can come here and cut all the pressure from Roy. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get you lots of beer and pretzels first. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank thanks. you. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. That's why we watched the. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Annika and Manu, hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, take care. Schönen Abend, guten Abend. Have a nice evening. Bye bye.